Hey guys, I am the 50s Kid, and this video is about how to change an old leaking or bad brake master cylinder and replace it with a new one, and also how to bench bleed that new one, and how to then bleed the entire system after you're done. So let's get started. You'll need some kind of container to catch the dripping brake fluid once you disconnect the lines. I'm just using some old Tupperware that I use for purposes like this. And looks like it's in a nice solid position right under here to just catch everything. And I think I will start by loosening the fittings with a, uh, a flare nut wrench. This actually is the proper tool to use for a job like this. You can see that it, uh, it grabs the fastener on, all f on five out of the six sides as opposed to a normal wrench which just grabs it on two sides. So it helps you just not to round off uh, fittings like this. Hopefully I've got that to, to a point where I can do it the rest of the way by hand. And it looks like I have. You definitely want to be wearing gloves for this. Brake fluid is uh, bad, poisonous stuff. You don't want to get it on you. And you don't want to get it on your paint, by the way. It will strip your paint. Um, as you can see, the, the level in this fluid was already pretty low. Um, when it came to me and from what I'm told it's been leaking from the rear grommet. There are two There are two ports where the reservoir fits down onto the master cylinder There are two rubber grommets where it fits in and it's been leaking from the rear grommet And I actually installed this this reservoir uh, not too long ago, and it was purchased from AutoZone It's got a lifetime warranty, so I'm taking it back Give me a new one It'll probably leak again Okay, there we go. Now, I'll need, uh, these are actually 12 millimeter bolts back here. I can use my little gear wrench to get at them, which is kind of nice. Looks like I could still get at them with some, you know, kind of long extension set up and a, and a ratchet. Kind of got lucky in this car. There's, I've got a lot of nice access here. Other vehicles, not so much. It's on the floor. We'll get it later. Probably get that by hand. Yeah. Cool. Got a couple of washers in there. As you can see, it's been leaking from the back here, this rubber grommet, because it's wet, as you can see, and it probably kind of still is. It's kind of dripping on the engine. Anyway, I'm going to drain this completely and take it back to the parts store and get a new one. Okay, I have my new cylinder right here and it actually came with a, a bench bleeding kit, which is uh, what this is right here. It's got a couple of ports, which I'm going to screw on here and a couple of tubes, which I'm going to run back into the reservoir. So basically I'm going to be cycling the fluid around until all of the fluid gets into the cylinder and all of the bubbles get out. Now, I'm using, make sure that you use fresh fluid when you do this. You see there's a, the, a date written on top of this container. It actually has been opened, but it was opened eight days ago. I always write the date on the outside of the container. You need to use fresh fluid. You don't want to use fluid that's been sitting around on your shelf for years and years, even if it's been sealed because uh, moisture will still seep through the, that seal and it'll still get inside. Brake fluid is very hygroscopic. It absorbs moisture from the air and the reason this is bad is because it, when, when, uh, when your brake fluid heats up, the moisture will boil. The water that's in the brake fluid now will boil and it'll turn to steam and steam is compressible and therefore you're, you're going to get, you know, you're going to be compressing that before you're actually going to be transferring brake force to your to your brakes and so you're not going to stop as well so you always need to use fresh fluid this is also why you're supposed to change your brake fluid every two years so uh brake fluid that's no more than two years old if it's even that old i would throw it out i would just just always buy fresh brake fluid it's it's a very good policy so before i do this before i put it in there i'm going to remove these plugs and i'm going to insert these plastic plugs into the bores here. I'm just gonna 
put these tubes on here. And there's a little clip here, and I'm not exactly sure how, I mean, it seems like it's supposed to hook on like that, but both of your tubes are actually supposed to run into here, so um, I'm not exactly sure what they intend with this, but I'm just going to kind of stick it in there like that. And I'm going to, well, first I'm going to fill the reservoir with brake fluid. Make sure that it's nice and full. So that float come up. So I'm just going to stick the tubes kind of down in there. Make sure they stay down in here. I can, I can see some bubbles kind of bubbling up right now. That's just gravity pulling the fluid down in there, pulling those bubbles up. I'm probably going to wait for this to stop before I even begin because you might as well let gravity do um, as much work as possible. I don't want to keep pushing brake fluid, you know, pushing bubbles through here and, and going crazy with it. I, you know, so I'm going to take a screwdriver. I'm going to push on the back of the brake cylinder just a little bit. Add some more fluid. Make sure I got enough in there. You basically keep pushing until you don't have any bubbles going through here. And you can see that there are a lot of little bubbles inside because the fluid's getting aerated. So I'm basically going to wait a little bit for those bubbles to all settle down. So after doing this for a little while, you can see how far we've come. Just kind of letting it settle. Bubbles get smaller and smaller. You basically just keep doing this until you can't see bubbles anymore. You get the idea. So now we are good. And they gave you, uh, they gave me little blue caps in this kit to basically cap these off. So just do that. I'll lift the hose up to drain that fluid down. Remove that hose. Well, now I can use this little thing to hold that hose on there, not that it matters. I suppose you could all, you could actually use this to do one at a time if that's what you if that's what you wanted to do if you wanted to use that. So let that drain. Boom. Put this down in my drain bin, which by the way I have a little drain bin below this on the floor to collect any dripping fluid like that. So put the cap on there. Now we have our bench bled brake cylinder, brake master cylinder, and we're going to go and install this on the vehicle. I like to put a little bit of grease on the end of the, uh, on the end of the vacuum booster rod. Um, this just prevents any noise when it contacts the, uh, the inside of the, the master cylinder there. I'm just using Molly Lube, any kind of grease. Doesn't matter, white lithium grease, anything. It'd be nice to install these one at a time and you can sort of, you can bend the brake lines a little bit out of the way. We're gonna bend them a little down. Actually, I'll probably bend them a little out just so I'll be able to install one at a time as I do this. So put the cylinder on, put this little bracket on. I retrieve the nut from under the car and I've got the lock washers. So one at a time, I'm gonna remove plug that's there, put 
put the brake line in there. If it's very hard to turn these, you know you've stripped the threads, you know, so be sure that you can, you know, when you're starting them, be sure you can just hand thread them, uh, the, the nut in there because you just, you do not want to strip the nuts or the threads in any way. Make sure we're good and tight. Now I'll do the other. And again, since I bent it out of the way, I'm going to bend it back. And you got to make sure that it's not at an angle because that's, that's how you can cross thread them. I'm watching to make sure that the threads are going in, that the wrench is turning easily. That's really all there is to it. I'm going to go ahead and connect up the level sensor here. Now we're going to bleed the brakes. The procedure for bleeding your brakes is you begin at the passenger side rear, then you move over to the driver side rear, then you move to the passenger side front and finish off with the driver side front. So one thing you're gonna need in order to bleed your brakes is some kind of container and tubing in order to fit over your brake bleed nipples. I believe this is quarter inch ID tubing, flexible. You're gonna need enough of it in order to run down and reach the bottom of your container. And you're going to need to put some old brake fluid in the bottom of your container. If you don't have old brake fluid, just use new brake fluid. It's okay. Just make sure that the bottom of the tubing is submerged inside of it, okay? The bottom cannot be up in the air. It has to be inside the brake fluid. I've raised the vehicle and supported it with jack stands, and I've removed the wheels. It's important to do this so you can get a clear view of the brake bleed nipple, which is on the back of the brake, which is right here. It's usually covered with... Uh, a rubber plug, which is good. Sometimes you don't see it. It's good that this vehicle has it. What you want to do is you want to spray these bleed nipples with a little bit of penetrating fluid, just PV Blaster, WD-40, something like that. So this is especially important if uh, your brake fluid's never been changed, your bleed nipples have never been cracked. They're probably you know pretty corroded and uh, they might be rusted in place. So always important there. You got to find a wrench that's the proper size. I like to use a box wrench and it's important to me to to crack these before I get started and to do that I'm just going to whack my wrench rather than twisting on it because I don't want to strip the uh, the nut so there you can see I cracked that one so now I know it's cracked it's free it's loose I'm gonna take my my tube and just kind of get it over the the nipple here this tube actually might be a little small, but that's why it's flexible. I can kind of stretch it over, as you see. Now I'm going to crack the bleed nipple. You can see there's old fluid already coming out. It's just the weight of the fluid. This is actually not looking too good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go inside and I'm going to step on the brakes and force the fluid out. What I want to do is I want to get this whole tube filled with fluid. I want to get all of the air out of this tube and that's the reason that the bottom is submerged in the container so that no air can get drawn back up and if I go into the vehicle and I keep on pumping on the brakes we'll squeeze all the bubbles out and we'll get them all down and, and we'll get them all down into the drain. I don't have a helper with me today so I'm just gonna do this by myself and I'm gonna keep on pumping a couple of times and I, I know from experience that I'm just gonna pump all of the air out of that tube and as long as I, as long as there's, as, as long as the, the fluid remains in that tube, I know that I'm gonna be okay and I know I'm gonna be able to bleed the system out and I'm not gonna get those, you know, I'm, those bubbles are not gonna keep returning in there. I'll kinda show you what I mean. So here I'm stepping on the brake and then coming up, stepping again. Coming up, stepping again, up, down, up. Yeah, and I can see, as we can see, there's still a couple of bubbles in here. One thing it would be nice to do is to have a little bit of, uh, is to actually to have a little bit 
of height in the tube here because this way if the if the tube is actually up above is hanging high over here um, the bubbles will will get pulled up by gravity as you see once I'm pulling them up here this way now when I squeeze some bubbles out the bubbles are going to go up here and they're not going to they're not going to come back in because gravity is not going to let them come back in the air is lighter than the, the fluid so it's going to get trapped up here in the loop in the bend so that's one other trick we can use or I'm going to use since I'm doing this by myself so I'm going to press down and up down up down up that all looks good to me got a nice solid tube of clear good brake fluid so i'm closing it off and pull the nipple off and let the fluid drain down into my container i will put that plug back on now before you move on to the next wheel you want to come back here and make sure you top the fluid off you can see we're down at the minimum mark we were actually above the max so i'm going to top it off with fluid just get into the habit of doing this after you do each wheel this is the driver's side rear and hit it with pb blaster Make sure I can crack it, which I can. Now, I'm just twisting my tube so that it's just kind of up like that. Actually, it might, it might turn a little bit once I open the bleed nipple, which it kind of has. And we can see again, we've got some, a little bit of dark fluid. Yeah, we can see that. And I'm gonna go step on the brakes a couple times. Down. Down, up. Oh, I forgot to mention. <laughs> if you're having any trouble keeping the fluid in, the, in this bottle, especially after you close the bleed nipple off, if this if this starts to disappear and the and the and the fluid goes back in, that means you've got a leak, a, a slow leak in through your bleed nipple. And what you want to do at that point is take the tube off, remove the bleed nipple, put some put uh, put a little catch pan underneath uh, underneath the brake in order to catch the dripping fluid. Take the bleed nipple out and clean it up. You're, you're probably almost certainly going to find corrosion on it and uh, you want to clean it with like a wire wheel on a, on a drill or um, maybe just a little bit of sand, a, a little bit of uh, um, a little bit of steel wool. Yeah, you know, you, you gotta you, you gotta do something to clean the corrosion and the rust off of the off of the bleed nipple. If you can't get it clean, go out and buy new bleed nipples because this is very important. You you really need to keep this stream of fluid in this tube in order to get a proper bleed. I've had situations where bleed nipples have leaked on me because there's been corrosion and crud in there and they haven't been seating properly. Air's leaked in and and I haven't gotten a proper bleed and I haven't gotten proper breaking force. So very important that you see this once your bleed nipple is closed anyway i'm going to open this back up and stomp once one more time make sure we've got all the all the uh, air out of there down up down up and it looks pretty good close that off let it drain. The cap back on and move on to the next one. Once again, topping off that fluid. So this is the passenger front. Spray that bleed, that bleed screw. This one doesn't have those little rubber caps, unfortunately, which isn't so good, but sometimes got no choice. There. And we're going to swing way down with this, so I don't want to go that loose. I'm probably going to put the wrench there. If you get the bleed nipples too loose, you could get air leakage in through the threads, and you don't want that. So 
So, just about there. That looks good to me. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Looking good. No bubbles at all. On to the next. Checking that cylinder. It looks like, yeah, didn't use much fluid to do that one. So, pretty good. Don't need to top it up. But I checked. Alright, driver's side front. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Looking good. Close that off. Make sure you don't get any brake fluid on the disc or the brake pad. Very important. So of course I'm giving it a final check and as we can see we're just below the max line there and I want to be just on it. If you have analog brakes, this bleeding procedure will not work for you. There's a special bleeding procedure associated with analog brakes and only the dealer can do it. They basically need to hook up their computer to the car and they need to activate the ABS pump and, in order to kind of shake the bubbles loose because there are all sorts of nooks and crannies inside the pump. There are, you know, chambers and, and, uh, and solenoids and valves and so on and so forth. And those need to be activated in order to get the bubbles free from the ABS pump. So if you do have analog brakes and you need to change a brake master cylinder, you have to go to your dealer afterwards in order to get it bled properly. But at least you can do all of this stuff and the vehicle should be safe enough to drive to the dealer. Um, use your own judgment on that. However, if you do not have analog brakes, you are now done. Thanks again for watching and uh, have a good one.